Picture this. You're in an arena with hundreds of people cheering in a frenzy as two athletes on a tennis court smash the ball from one side to the other with lightning-sharp reflexes. And no, one of the players isn't Serena Williams. In fact, none of them are humans. They're both robots, and humanoids like them are winning sprints in the Olympics, scoring goals in the World Cup, and even doing a slam dunk at NBA Finals. The crazy part is that this world isn't as far away as you think. A month ago, Unitree released a video of their latest humanoid, the Unitree G1, performing some kung fu moves. One user said, The amount of balance and smoothness this robot has is amazing, and in such a short time. I remember seeing a video they released only two years ago where the robot could just about walk. And I couldn't help but agree. Researchers have become significantly better over the last decade at making robots walk like humans, and now they can play sports like us too. I was surprised when I recently came across a video from last year of a highly skilled robot beating a human at table tennis. At first glance, it looked like the two were locked in a heated match reminiscent of the final scene from Challengers as they sprinted back and forth along the table. If you watch the video, you can even hear the human player grunting as he struggles to keep up with the impressive humanoid. That's till his robotic opponent nonchalantly taps the ball over the net in a winning shot. I remember wondering why didn't this video get more traction? Surely, a robot beating a human at a highly competitive sport should have made the news. As suspected, the video turned out to be a fake. The original footage showed Slovakian table tennis competitor Yang Wang and Czech player Pavel Siracek at the 2023 European Table Tennis Championships. So the editor simply digitally altered one of the very human players to look like an animated CGI robot. We could get into the advancements of AI visual effects another day, but after seeing that video, I was interested in finding out if any existing robot was capable of such a feat, and if not, how close we are to achieving that. While there's currently no robot that can take down world champions in a one-on-one -on -one table tennis match, Google DeepMind has trained one that can take on novice players. For context, this research project started to gain significant attention in August 2024, when the company released footage of the robot displaying human-level dexterity and speed at the sport. Attached to an industrial robot arm was a paddle holder with an end effector designed to adjust the paddle with precision and speed. Besides the intricate, multi-jointed system, the robotic agent also has multiple high-speed cameras strategically positioned to track the ball's trajectory, speed, and spin. Combined with an AI computer system that can process this visual data in real time, the robot can not only predict where the ball is going to land, it can react, too. Its algorithm and reflexes are so sophisticated that if you're a beginner, you'd most likely lose if you faced this robot on the other end of a table. That's because in matches against 29 human players with varying skill level, the robot was able to beat every single beginner. It also won against intermediate players 55% of the time. That's more than one win in every other game. The only players that stood a marginal chance at beating the robot were the advanced players who clearly had more experience and could exploit the robot's weaknesses. Due to a lack of data and hardware limitations, the robot struggled to handle lobs and fastballs. But I imagine that if Google DeepMind keeps on improving its hardware, especially to a humanoid one with the necessary upper body mechanics, and the robot keeps collecting data by playing with experts, it may not need CGI to compete in a real championship someday. According to Barney J. Reed, a professional table tennis coach that worked with Google's team to train the robot, it's truly awesome to watch Watch the robot play players of all levels and styles. Going in, our aim was to have the robot be at an intermediate level. Amazingly, it did just that. I feel the robot exceeded even my expectations. Meanwhile, across the pond in China, another robot exceeded expectations much more recently. The world's first humanoid robot half marathon was held a few weeks ago in Beijing, where the Tiangong Ultra not only competed, but claimed the championship. Developed by the Beijing Humanoid Robot Innovation Center, this bot was able to complete a 21-kilometer race in just under three hours. It bested other robotic participants, including Beijing's Noetics Robotics that placed in second and third. 
20 other bipedal robots from teams nationwide competed in this race, but a considerable crowd turned up with phones to capture the momentous event, or dystopian nightmare, depending on how you view it. What I found particularly interesting about this half marathon is that it wasn't a flat walk. The 21-kilometer route had different terrains for each robot to cover before they made it to the finish line. It included lots of ramps and rails that truly challenged the robot's mobility and flexibility, and the Tiangong Ultra sailed through with flying colors. In comparison, one robot lost control at the start of the race, showing that while some humanoids are truly impressive, most still have miles to go. Further driving that point home was the fact that human runners were competing in their own half marathon fenced off from the robots and their operators by a wall. And just as human runners needed to replenish themselves with water, the robot contestants also had the chance to get new batteries during the race. In the end, Tiangong Ultra emerged two hours behind the winner of the men's race who finished in one hour and two minutes. Perhaps next year, the Beijing Humanoid Robot Innovation Center will be able to close the gap. But humanoid robots are also doing much more than running track. Once again, China is demonstrating their dedication to innovation and AI technology, with local football matches featuring Android players. In a video from late 2024, two robot teams in blue and white competed in a small field in Shandong, China. In the short clip, you can clearly see robots running towards the ball with short steps and slowing down to step in place before kicking the ball, showing there's still more room for work in terms of the fluidity of their movement. However, it was still impressive to watch a humanoid player from the blue team seize possession of the ball while a white player tried to intercept as their teammate acted as the goalie. The blue team's robot was still able to strike, managing to score a goal before tumbling to the floor after pumping its arm in the air in a winning pose. Maybe it was trying to do a knee slide? More recently, New China TV shared a video of robots of similar make playing football in Wuji, China. Although, these robots were a lot more skilled, with their kicks and running being a lot more fluid. And this time, when a robot scored a goal, it was able to stay upright after scoring and pumping its arm in the air. Interestingly, you can see a robot on the same team do the same, clearly celebrating the team's win. But it seems even robots can't escape injuries, as a member of the opposing team was dramatically carried off in a stretcher after it seemingly passed out on the field. Despite that hiccup, who knows? We might see robots playing side by side with humans in future World Cups. But what about a humanoid robot with a black belt? Like I said earlier, a month ago, Unitree released a video of their latest humanoid robot, the G1, performing some kung fu moves. It was impressively able to even disarm its human opponent with a roundhouse kick that tossed the stick in the unseen person's hand to the ground flawlessly. One user, clearly in awe of the demonstration, said, Dude, look at its left leg being able to support the entire body during the roundhouse kick. Incredible balance, already mimicking the human body. In comparison, another user expressed their apprehension for Unitree's recent development by saying, I've seen this in sci-fi movies, and it never ends well. What's your opinion on having robots that could potentially overpower you? Although, at 4 feet and 3 inches, the G1's smallish frame is hardly imposing, so maybe you could take it. But I think it'll be best to adhere to the company's warning to please keep a safe distance from the robot. However, if you're interested in having it as a sparring partner, according to the company's website, that will cost you anywhere from $16,000 up. On a more peaceful note, Tesla has also released videos in the past showing their star humanoid model, Optimus, doing yoga. Thanks to the robot's ability to now self-calibrate its arms and legs, it was able to use only vision and joint position encoders to identify its limbs in space and replicate common yoga moves. As a result, the humanoid robot was able to stretch out its arms and a leg while maintaining its balance. It even struck a standing tree namaste pose at the end of the video with its palms pressed against each other at chest level while the sole of one foot bent to face the inner thigh of the other leg. While Optimus is still a couple years away from leading a yoga retreat, the fact it was able to hold its balance in such a complicated pose that even some humans would struggle with demonstrates its advanced actuation and control system. 
Considering Optimus' capabilities are still improving as Tesla gears up for a possible 2026 commercial release, I can't help but wonder what complex poses the final model would be capable of. Would we be able to take yoga classes with our home assistants? But considering we're still training robots to walk more like us and shed their more clunky and rigid steps, how is it possible to train them to play sports? After all, it's one thing to look like us and another to possess the same dexterity and skill of the most physically fit humans on the planet. The answer lies in a combination of technologies. For starters, robots learn to mimic human movement using second-by-second -second motion capture. It's just like a child learning to throw a ball or swing a racket by watching you. However, thanks to advanced AI, these robots can more accurately process other information, like the power of a swing or the distance of a jump. That means with the right hardware, they can replicate the same movements and adjust their motor controls accordingly to achieve the same results. Of course, like humans, they're not always able to get this right off the bat. That's where reinforcement learning comes into the picture. It's when the robot plays the sport thousands of times virtually and uses each opportunity to get better with trial and error and rise through the ranks from amateur to intermediate like Google DeepMind's table tennis player. In some instances, researchers use complex training simulations like NVIDIA's Isaac Simulator, which was used to train Unitree's G1 to learn basic boxing skills and do a perfect sideways flip. Boston Dynamic also uses the same simulator in training their new Atlas, which now showcases more human-like motion like leaning forward when running and tucking its torso to slow down. I have detailed videos about both robots, by the way, so you should definitely check them out. As a result, these approaches help the robot learn complex activities like returning a ball in table tennis, dribbling a basketball, or performing parkour. So how does it all affect the real world? And what are the implications of training robots that can compete with the best of the best in human sports? I always emphasize how AI is going to revolutionize the manufacturing and logistics industries as humanoid robots join the workforce and take over boring, repetitive, and dangerous jobs from humans. And yes, while those are the industries that are most likely to be hit the hardest because they're already facing a labor shortage, and it's easier to get a robot to move a box than kick a ball, they're not the only ones facing change. In just two weeks, Unitree Robotics got over 7 million likes on their video of the Unitree G1 in a fist match. I don't think it's a stretch to expect them to pull the same numbers or more when they stream a live match, judging by the number of people in the comments section that can't wait to see one. After all, let's face it, real steel in real life is pretty cool. And the more people show up for these events, the more motivation AI engineers will have to build better and stronger robots that can compete. Wouldn't you at least have a passing interest in seeing if a humanoid could best Cristiano Ronaldo on the pitch? In the long run, humanoid robots are going to invade human sports, and we'll have to start asking ourselves questions like, should they compete against humans? Is it fair for athletes in first world countries to use this technology when competing against opponents in third world countries that may not have the same privilege? Besides, with technology advancing much quicker than biology, it's entirely possible that in a couple decades we'd have superhumanoid robots that are better than Olympic gold medalists. In such instances, would we even still want to see humans compete when robots can do it better and faster? There are a lot of ways humanoid robots in sports could change the way we view competition in the future. However, I think we're more likely to see hybrid sports with human controllers or human and robot tag teams way before total replacement becomes an issue. So what do you think about robots participating in sports? Do you think you could ever cheer for robot athletes? Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And while you're at it, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more updates.